when I approach aesthetics, I, I, I always integrate uh, functional medicine and the overall health of the patient. And that entails bioidentical hormone replacement and balancing, uh, lifestyle changes, and this, gonna, this is really true when it comes to um, body contouring. So when I present in aesthetics, you're going to hear some cases where uh, we're going to start with aesthetics and we're going to end up with uh, treating bioidentical hormones or we start out with treating bioidentical hormones and lifestyle and we're going to end up with aesthetics. And that's a really important business model, in my opinion, for your practice. Uh, you have a, we already talked about it, you have a captive audience. If you're doing aesthetics, you'll see if you do bioidenticals, patients with have, especially women who have hormone imbalances or deficiencies, um, that promotes fine lines in their face. For example, estriol deficiency is something that in the late 30s they start losing estriol, women start losing estriol, and they start developing fine lines. And that's one way to treat them. So we're going to talk about um, gluteal sculpting. So when a typical patient comes in, they want to, this is it. It's like, hey doc, you know, I got my mom's butt. Hey, what are you going to do about it? Um, I, I'm on the treadmill 45 minutes, five times, you know, five times a week, and I, I just can't, you know, get my body in shape. And this is typically a female that is 35, 40 years old and is becoming, uh, starting, starting to age. They become progesterone deficient, estrogen dominant. And that's going to, you're going to see that in a couple of minutes over and over again. Um, you know, I've had a couple of kids and now my butt's sagging. Um, I'm, you know, just got the wrong diet, the wrong lifestyle. Those are all important um, things to address when you're, when you're looking at um, addressing body sculpting and you want to be successful at it. Uh, yeah, and gravity's a bitch. So what, what really happens, um, in, you know, it, it, to a body part when we start to age? Well, we lose muscle tone. And if you read the literature, it says, oh, you start losing muscle in your 50s and then it accelerates in your 60s. We start losing muscle tone in our 30s. So by the time we get to 40, that's part of the problem. And the typical patient that I like to choose that is a good candidate is a probably 30 to 45, maybe 50 years old and is usually physically active and has muscle mass and is probably has some fat that they can't lose. We get, uh, so we get increased uh, fat um, volume. Uh, we have sex hormone imba imbalances, as I mentioned. Uh, loss of skin tone, laxities, sun damage, excess cortisol is a, is a big factor. We're, we're not going to uh, get too into it today. This is a hands-on course, so I'm going to go through these slides as quickly as possible, give you as much knowledge as possible, and then we're going to get to a demonstration. So lifestyle choices, what we do uh, every day in terms of uh, sleep, stress, exercise, and diet. And, uh, you know, and as I mentioned before, little or the wrong exercises. So everybody knows the anatomy. We're dealing with the th three, well, one, some of the largest muscles in the body. So when we talk about uh, uh, gluteal contouring, and I explain to a patient, I said, what, what can I expect? Well, I said, if we do a lower facelift, you know, this cheek is, how much is that way? A couple of, it, we're in ounces. This cheek is pounds. So <laughs> for us to actually lift um, the gluteal muscle is, is difficult. We have to use several modalities, different modalities, in order to, to uh, achieve a um, um, satisfactory success. So I'm not going to get into the anatomy. I just wanted to point this out because we're going to uh, set up a few uh, guidelines where our um, insertion points are. Uh, most importantly, um, there's, not, there's so much room to play here. There's no, no real significant structures we're going to hit that we're concerned about. Uh, the sciatic nerve is really deep. The IT band we're going to avoid. If we don't want to do anything laterally, if we're going to lift a saddlebag, you'll see a, a, a lateral vector in the, uh, along the gluteus medius will actually help lift that saddlebag. So anatomy, you know, just for completeness sake, uh, we have various different um, 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 types of anatomy when we're assessing um, uh, the gluteal area to, uh, to, to do a procedure. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is a very important part of um, being able to uh, have a successful outcome. Most patients that, around 35 is my typical hormone patient, well, they'll come in and we just talked, I just talked about it with Rebecca, it's like, I don't know what's going on. I'm, working out like I've never worked out before. I look at a carb and I gain weight. I can't lose these pounds. And then there's some other things happening. My sleep starts to be interrupted. I'm, I've got mind chatter. I'm getting irritable. My sex drive is starting to slip. And then they, they come in and they say, okay, I need to do some aesthetics. And often that pear shape is the estrogen dominance that we see. And that ends up with excess fat pounds, especially around the, um, um, uh, the buttock area and the hips. 
Uh, so muscle atrophy, loss of volume, that's one of the um, um, most difficult things to deal with. As I mentioned before, active lifestyles are really important. You're very active, you've got great muscle mass, you're gonna, I think you're going to do really well. I think you're a perfect candidate for this. So um, l losing um, or not having any muscle mass, either genetically or because of lifestyle, is very difficult. But this takes an intensive lifestyle program to start building the gluteal muscle back. There's something, there's a, a patient when we get to a certain age, we just, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, tackle this. There's a lot of sun damage, we have a lot of muscle atrophy, we have a lot of skin sagging, and that's a very difficult case and I would not um, uh, take that on. And then we have excess fat. This may be the extreme case of, um, of estrogen dominance, poor diet, uh, genetics. Um, there's really nothing we're gonna do, uh, be able to do with um, uh, that type of contouring in my opinion. Here's a great, uh, um, you know, we have mild superior gluteal muscle, uh, loss of muscle. We have loss of volume right here. And that's why we start losing that, that lift that we have when we're in a certain decade, let's say our teens or 20s or wherever it might be. The, the glutes start to drop because we're losing superior muscle mass <clears throat> in addition to gaining fat in the area and then creating saddlebags. And just gravity in general, you know, everybody starts heading south at some point in time. So choose wisely, that's the best choice. Obviously what I just said, uh, if we don't have a lot of muscle mass, I'm, I shy away from that. Um, and obviously we have excess fat, that's even more difficult to be able to, uh, to lift and contour. So gluteal uh, sculpting protocol. Uh, there's a, there's a, well there's several, I'm gonna do, give you the basics today, what I do. Um, as I mentioned before, it's an art, I'm skip that slide. Here's my uh, protocol summary. Uh, most importantly, we have to choose wisely. Uh, consent, pre and post photos. Um, determine your thread vectors. That's the most important thing. We're going to demonstrate that today. Um, understand it's a minimally invasive office procedure. This is not Brazilian butt lifting. It's a, that's a totally different uh, procedure, outcome, cost, etc. Side effect profile. And what is, is favorable here and, and, and sellable, if you will, or, or um, palatable to the patient is. You're doing it in the office and we're gonna, in about an hour, your procedure's gonna be done, put you on a, a lifestyle program and, and decide and then you know, see how you do and, and see if we need a repeat. Often we do, uh, I do follow up a repeat and, um, uh, protocols with my patients and, and do uh, additional thread uh, insertions. So uh, post-procedure, uh, the First week, their uh, patients will not have, um, uh, there's no exercise at all, it's all rest. Um, second week um, is, uh, um, uh, you can ad lib a little bit. My patients are often very active and they're already at the gym at week two and I don't really want them doing anything um, uh, significant to uh, stress the, the, the threads that we have, have in place. And, but the, they're at a point where people go, well, is this, is this gonna hurt? For the first couple of days, you might get some pinching, you might get a little swelling and tenderness, we're at the insertion point, um, but within a week, they want to go to the gym. They want to start working out, they're really excited. They, oh, I got all these exercises the doc gave me, and uh, I'm, I want to start shaping my butt. Uh, so we balance nutrition, and most importantly, manage expectations. That's um, uh, going to create the most success for you, uh, so the patient is not disappointed. So, uh, most, so we get into the protocol. Just like face, we want to assess for asymmetry. Rarely have I seen a, um, a symmetrical butt, just like it, rarely do you see a symmetrical face. You're, you're actually qu quite symmetrical, so you're gonna be um, pretty easy today in terms of um, how we're gonna place threads. When I place threads, I often will, very rarely do I have the same amount of threads in, on the left and the right. There's usually one off or I come back a couple of weeks later, add another, adjust a, a few more threads or um, uh, when, uh, after the first procedure. So this is a patient who, she's 47, uh, works out um, a lot. She looks great. I, I know, maybe you can't tell in that photo, but she, she really looks in, in, in great shape. This girl, uh, female, she's 51. Um, and she, you can see some asymmetry here. We have some uh, on the lateral aspect of her uh, uh, glute on the left. Um, she, just, just, she just has some uh, atrophy. We all have asymmetry in our body and hers is showing up here. Hers is actually, um, you know, she's pretty, she's actually pretty symmetrical. But if you look close enough, you could see more of a dimple here than there is on the left. She has more of a dimple on her right with some sagging here. I'm sorry if I'm in the way, guys. I can't. Um, 
and you can see here she's she's flattening out and everybody's concerned about this they all want to lift that so I'm going to show you where I use Sculptor. What, I, what we do is we're going to work, we use the um, threads to, to lift and contour. And Sculptor, we start in the superior aspect of the glutes to build volume. Oh. And that's when, that's when we overlay the, um, the uh, certain exercises that I know from, from the bodybuilding world to be able to sculpt the muscle. And that's what it's all about. If you can sculpt muscle, you can really change the contour of any, any body part or any muscle, yeah, I should say. So you want to determine your thread vectors just like the face, like uh, uh, Dr. Michael was saying. Uh, these are, you know, barb thread cannulas. I'm not sure what we're using today. I think it's um, Forte, uh, which is, I think is going to be uh, is a great application. As I mentioned before, we're not going to go laterally. That, you're not going to lift the saddle bag from the lateral aspect where the IT band is. We're going to cause a lot of issues there. We can lift it with a... Um, um, a uh, a lat over the gluteus medius, you're going to see, we'll probably do two in, in, in you today, uh, a little bit more laterally. So this is the insertion zone. You can see this on the video and you're going to see it live today. We want to come off the glute, um, excuse me, the iliac crest where these uh, superior glute inserts, but we want to stay about a, a, above the coccyx. So we're right in that zone where we have hopefully, the, yeah, well it's not hopefully, that's where we have the least amount of um, uh, of uh, movement, if you will. If we put a, a thread too high in the lower back, we're going to be doing a lot of pulling. We want to stay in the glute. We want to stay in the glute, superior glute, and that's where our insertion zone is, and we're coming down vertically to the, about the mid part of the gluteus maximus, um, and that's our location for our threads. The lateral zone is, um, just want to point that out, lateral zone's over here, and you'll see it a, a, a lot easier when we do it live demonstration or in the video. I do a lot of mono threading, same thing. We can tighten skin, we can contour. I like to um, cross hatch a lot with, with threads and that's determined based on what you see, where you see sagging, where you want to lift, where you want to tighten. That's where we volumize, as I mentioned, biofill or PLLA, like a Sculptra. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna, working on protocols to do more biofill uh, in, um, in the area to start um, um, increasing the volume, the superior part of the glute and help raise the, and change the contour of the, of the buttocks. So this is a simple tape option. We're going to do it today. I take a, a lot of tape, stand the patient up, put them against the wall, and I figure, okay, where do we want this, you know, tissue to be? And I'll just, I'll raise it with, you know, several pieces of adhesive tape where I think it should be. Then we lie them down, and then we set up our, our where we're going to uh, do the procedure. But um, I like to determine while they're in, uh, while, while gravity is working on, the, on that tissue and, and where it is currently and where we want to try and raise it or where we want to try and contour it. And you, I'd like doing it with adhesive tape. Just an option, you don't have to, you don't have to do that, but uh, that's um, uh, one of my, uh, my go-tos. Anesthesia, I use tumescence. Uh, that's that's a pretty typical protocol. Um, I don't think, well you're going to see me, uh, we're going to have a video, I'm going to show you how I mark it up. These were 18 gauge cannulas, um, PDO threads, uh, I think I inserted nine in this patient. Um, and there's, uh, well there's just an example of, uh, that's, uh, that's the patient I saw on the left that had the asymmetry. We were working in this area, I think I put some threads here and, uh, well you, you'll we'll see the results. These are monos, these are 27 gauge 60s. Uh, already inserted, you can see where I inserted the, uh, the cannulas. Okay, so uh, hopefully this, I don't think this is too long. So you can see the cottage, you know, kind of the, the dimpling she has, she's lost volume. And here, here comes the artist, he's gonna go. <laughs> ah, perfect. So, <laughs> so I'm um, sorry that uh, that dropped out, but we're already on the table now. I made, uh, you know, I made my marks where I'm gonna insert the, the cannula, they're kind of uh, washed out there. And then we're just um, obviously using a little tumescent fluid to, uh, uh, for my portal entries. Now I'm making the portal entries with an 18 gauge. And here you're saying the Forte is a better option for this. I think Forte's are going to be a game changer. Game changer. Uh, yeah, they sure do. All right. Yeah, when you look at your price sheets, you'll notice, I think it's in your Zemira queue, they sell in the cannula section an 18 gauge 100 millimeter thread. The Forte's are on a separate line. Yeah. And it's what Randy talked about. It's uh, the molding. Gotcha. There's two. So there are two offerings of 18 gauge 40. It's the Fortes that have that molded, patented design, which is going to give you the maximum lift. 
So, so sure there's the 18 gauge, uh, there's the cannulas going in. Uh, not a lot of, you know, to try and create a tunnel. We want to stay close enough to in the subcutaneous tissue. If we go too deep, we're not going to get lift and we're not going to be able to get that, that grab that we're looking for. And if we go too superficially, they'll let you know they, it, it creates a lot of pain. So I leave them all in for hemostasis, and I, obviously uh, uh, there's no rush, in my opinion, to take, uh, take the, the cannulas out. They're pretty easy to insert. I don't, you, know, you don't run into a lot of resistance. There we go. So on, on occasion when I use the Fortes, I've had to use an eight, a 16 gauge to make my portal. I was gonna because ask. when you're skilled and you're doing an 18 gauge pilot hole and you're trying to put an 18 gauge cannula through it, it can be pretty tight. And when you get a long needle, your risk of bending because of the torque factor. Wow. So they do make a 16 gauge needle, which I keep some around just for that purpose. And it does give me a little bit better portal. Yeah, I have, a, I have a tendency to put that 18 in there to kind of just stretch it just a little bit. So I don't. When you order the cannulas, do you get the needles with them? No. You get the needles from your regular supplier, supplier. Henry Shine, right. or whoever you yeah. buy your, your med supplier. So I'd, I'd twist the cannula a little bit, and just the same technique you've been taught already. We want to chase that cannula up with a finger, lock the, lock the uh, barbs into place. And this one's not bi directional, right? It is. It is. So the the forte. The way we want. Exactly. Yep. Most important piece of any of the lesson is right there because if you get one moving around on you, it's going to be painful no yeah. matter what. No matter where you put it in the body. So that looks better already to me, but <laughs> I was there. <laughs> and same technique. The way we're going to take the uh, you know, snip, um, cut our threads, our sutures. Uh, but this isn't going to fix the estrogen dominance. This isn't going to fix that layer of fat that has the addition, causing the additional sag. And um, we have to change diet, balance hormones. Uh, her, her, her estrogen is down to, I think, 127. We talked about a COMT SNP. Any, I don't know if anybody's into functional medicine. We, I, I do a lot of SNPs, look at methylation, look at the breakdown of estrogens in, in, in women. And they have a lot, of, uh, a lot of metabolites that actually increase cancer risks, risks, et cetera, and cause this estrogen dominance. So understanding the functional medicine aspect of these procedures is, is extremely important. Um, we're going to get a lot of um, uh, benefit from uh, the Fortes. Uh, that's going to be our basis that we build on, um, and I, uh, but you have to have a comprehensive program when we're, when we're dealing with larger tissue, larger volume. So how do you decide the height of the insertion of the threads? Okay, so that's, uh, that's a video. So he, here's, a, here's, a, here's a good example. Do you see a difference? She does, and I'll point it out to you. So. She had, um, so I came back, and this is a great teaching example because see how her, I don't know if you remember, remember before, but her, her, she was flatter here, and now she's starting to uh, become a little bit more convex. But look at this, this saddle bag right here, she hates. And I put one more thread in, and it's still there, but look how, look how it, it is here, and look how it is here. She's lost about a half inch, she put her jeans back on, she went, whoa, that's great. All I did was put one more thread in, I vectored it right to here, pulled that up, and it, it improved that saddlebag instantly. On this side, you can see a little bit, but she had less on this side. She still has this going on. She's got monos here. Hmm? Look at that. Yes, but you could, so look at the asymmetry, meaning I, I was here to do this one, I was up here to do this one. You're always going to look at them independently. Uh, there's one other thing I wanted to point out. Uh, yeah, so here's, and here's this, it's interesting because I pulled this saddlebag up. And look, at she's, look at the way she is here. Now this, there's a little bit of an angle here, but it actually, um, you can see that when I pick this up, it brought this out. She's on a little bit more of an angle, but, but this is a little bit more dominant now. So you can make some significant changes with just one thread. And the first time around, this was still here. I had already done her threads, and she came back and she goes, she said, I'm Mr. Jim Domino, we'll get rid of these saddlebags. I said, okay, let's put a few more threads in. And that was an instantaneous change. That was really, that was, uh, 
She's, um, let's, well, you're going to see a few more of her, so you'll see what it looks like. In fact, the next photo is, we're going to see an example of, so here she is. Yes, she's a, she's a little bit, uh, um, you know, she's a little bit forward here, but she was really flat here, and now she's starting to develop some contour. That's beautiful. And it's not because she's doing this. You can't, if you're flexing your butt, she wasn't doing that. I said, just show me your butt, what's going on? <laughs> and, and uh, so she said, look at this, it's getting, you know, it's starting to round out. It was really flat here. Yeah. Here's, here's another shot. You can see that uh, we're, wow. you're starting to create that contour. Um, this was about a month or month and a half out. She's a gym rat, this girl. She used to compete a lot in bikini competition, fitness, et cetera. And she's 51, by the way. So um, just to give you a perspective. So this was at, still after one vial, yeah, yeah. And you should, I don't have the photos now. Uh, I don't think I have her uh, after. She's about three months out now. Okay, probably the most important part besides threading in, in, uh, in gluteal uh, uh, contouring, exercise. I'm not going to go through each of these, but everybody exercises wrong. I know how to do the right exercises. And then there's a piece of technology we're, we're going to try and demonstrate today. This is called Compex. We use it in anything from pro athletes to bodybuilders to rehab. And it is a Swiss piece of technology. I have it right here. I don't know of any financial vested interest in this product, but if you're going to do contouring, you're going to sculpt some beautiful muscles with this. And we might have a chance to do it. I'm not sure what, but this is how, um, this is part of my protocol, and I'll show you how to use it. It's not it's like 250 bucks, uh, that, um, but they do this every other day, and you're going to see some beautiful uh, hypertrophy proven in study after study to improve uh, hypertrophy. It actually in, uh, has mu mu skeletal muscle produces IGF-1 in response to the treatment. So remember, it's art. <laughs> anyway, thank you.